The African struggle for self-rule began in the Gold Coast, where only 5,000 Britons, mostly traders and administrators, controlled 2 million Africans. The struggle began when demonstrations led by army veterans turned violent. 29 were killed. The protests were molded into a mass movement by a charismatic leader known as Iron Boy, Kwame Nkrumah. Nkrumah founded a political party and told Africans, we have a right to govern ourselves. Like Gandhi, he preached civil disobedience and asked Africans to demand self-rule of the nation they called Ghana. He organized a boycott of British goods and a general strike. The British saw him as a dangerous firebrand under communist influence and put him in prison. The jailing of Nkrumah crystallized the movement and gave a new impetus to the campaign to replace British rule with an elected government. Komla Bedima, Nkrumah's friend and fellow worker, led the struggle in his absence. I had to organize the party around the country at the same time as keeping the machinery of the party going. But we did it all. And to help us do it, one of the tools I used was to have a full life-size photograph of Nkrumah made in, into three parts so that it makes a, a decent small parcel. And this I carried around as part of my paraphernalia for the campaign. Nkrumah's body is in jail, but his spirit is going on. Now, how can we not vote for such a man? The mass action brought results. With the colony in ferment, the British finally agreed to a general election. They hoped Nkrumah would lose to more conservative opponents. In 1951, the Gold Coast voted for the first time ever for their own local assembly. Nkrumah's party won a landslide victory. Reluctantly, the governor had to release him from jail. It was the beginning of the end of British rule in Africa.